Back here on the Charles River with Dave Presky, Bill Spaulding, glad to be with you. Set for the fourth varsity race, and once again, Boston University crashing the party of what's supposed to be a Harvard versus Navy versus Penn triple header. No Penn in the 4V, we have BU, Harvard, and Navy racing head-to-head -head in this fourth varsity race. And uh, Dave, good challenge again for the uh, Crimson here with these deep boats for Navy and with a BU 4V that just during warm-ups looked pretty strong. Yeah, no, I, I think all the boats look good uh, in warm-ups. We saw them doing some practice starts and everyone looked pretty solid. Um, the conditions are great again, still. The, the wind hasn't really picked up. So. Yeah, hardly a breeze at all. Yeah, so hopefully we have a good, clean, competitive race. It looks like the boats are getting locked on now. Navy seems to be ready to go and BU's locked on. So um, we should be ready to go in just a second. Run you through the lineups for Harvard. The Cox and his sophomore Madeline Zabriski. Chase Buckles in the stroke seat. Phil Bates in seat seven. Freshman David Fleming in seat six. Travis Anderson in seat five. Ty Gill is in seat four. Uh, Carter Dickinson, a freshman in seat three. Freshman Jack Lean in seat two. In the bow is sophomore Niers Lauerberg, who's made the move from lightweight to heavyweight. Doesn't have to worry about shedding those uh, extra few pounds anymore. Yeah, lucky guy. <laughs> lucky guy. This time of year can be pretty tough, so... Um, and he gets to eat a little bit more every night at dinner. Lineup for Navy in the fourth varsity eight. A junior coxswain, Julia Faust. The stroke is a sophomore, Jack Gaynor. In seat seven, junior Jonathan Wabeek. In seat six, sophomore Charles Linder. Then it's sophomore Noah Stewart in seat five. Freshman Evan Camp in seat four. Ryan Adair in seat three. Senior Jack Ogden in seat two. And freshman Stefano Korakados in seat number one. Being a surprise addition, so we do not have the uh, lineup for the Terriers, but uh, they've been a strong team this year on the Charles. Yep, and the BU coach used to be my high school coach. He's an awesome guy, two-time Olympian, so these guys will be trained up well. Looks like we are set with alignment. Oh, away we go. Fourth varsity race between BU at the bottom of your picture, Harvard in the middle of your picture, and the Navy midshipmen at the top of your picture. I've got Harvard going off at a 47. Well, we saw in the first race, Navy's strength is the start. So if the Crimson can stick with the midshipmen out of the chute here, and Harvard, in fact, has gained some seats out of the start, that's a good omen for the rest of the race. Yes, no, Harvard's coming off really clean and really high. Um, and, and I think they've got a couple seats over Navy and definitely a couple seats over BU right now. So a much better start than the, the 5V race. By the way, we'd be remiss if we did not mention the style of the bucket hat from Chase Buckles in the uh, stroke seat for the Crimson. It's legendary. <laughs> That's the best. Harvard already with about a four seat, maybe a five seat lead on Navy. BU and Harvard basically neck and neck out of the shoot. Yep, and I've got Harvard settling a little bit high now, but you know, it looks like they've got six, seven seats and and continuing to take distance with every stroke. They've really started aggressively, which is something, you know, we haven't seen today or in last last week's races. I, you know, I think the most aggressive start we saw last week from the Harvard crew was that JV race, yep. and they, they did well and won that one. But um, this, this is great to see. The Harvard crew's really set the tone early. That was the lone Harvard win in the four races against Princeton last week, that second varsity. Saw Maddie Zabritsky, the uh, coxswain, take a glance to her right, and she sees that Harvard, in fact, has a little bit of open water now in front of Navy as they look for separation past the first 500. Yep, no, that's great. That's a good sign. And I got Harvard at 38, still pretty high, and the headwind is starting to hit us a little bit. Um, and it looks like BU's settled now. You know, as you can see in the Navy boat, um, you know, once you get down that quickly, it's hard it's hard to stay focused at times and, and remain really motivated, and occasionally technique can get sloppy. So hopefully the Navy guys can keep it together. Well, BU and Harvard neck and neck about 750 meters through. Navy is locked in that margin. It's open water, but they haven't fallen any further behind over the last 300 meters or so. Yep, no, that's right, and that, that's good. They've got to stay around, and then hopefully one of these boats can falter or something happens or they get tired because these Navy guys guys have been trained hard and these this is the travel team and they've got a lot of guys so no doubt no doubt these guys are fit and can do it you mentioned it, you look into a Navy boat they are physically imposing because they not only have to train for crew but they have to pass all these other military fitness tests so they have as you said muscles in places where most rowers don't have muscles yeah no they're big guys I mean in a street fight it's pretty clear who's <laughs> 
and coming through the thousand it looks like it's around 250 with Harvard coming first BU is you know I, I want to say two or three seats behind and Harvard it looks like it's taken a move here and, and moved out to just more than open yeah very tight between Harvard and Boston University as we head under the bridge Navy slides through at the 1000 mark a little bit of open meter almost a length behind and then the other thing I'd say that's important is Harvard has obviously loved, loved to get a peek at BU before we get to the championship season at the yep. end of the year. And so they're going to have to deal with these guys eventually. And so the fact that they got a sneak peek at their speed today is important. It does look like BU has taken a big yep. move here it, and is even or maybe a seat or two up. Yeah, BU has pulled just in front after BU came back on Navy in the 5 V race. They were behind here out of the start in the 4V, but they have come through with that big move in the middle 1,000 meters to take a slight lead. Yep, and I think I see Harvard responding a little bit here. It looks like they've bumped up the rate a bit. They're back up to 38. Now, some teams, they have almost every stroke plan. They know when they're going to make their moves. They know exactly when they're going to go. Do you think for Harvard right now this is a planned move, or they're responding to what BU did in trying to close the gap? Uh, they're responding. Um, you want to win the race, and if, if you're, I mean, sometimes and very often things don't go according to plan. Yep. So if the other guy hits you first, the plan's out the window. So four minutes twenty seconds gone as we approach the five hundred meter to go mark with this really calm, flat water. Both these teams taking advantage, even into a slight headwind. Yeah, no, this is about as good as it gets, and it looks like you saw Chase poke over and look at where where BU's ahead. I'd say they've got about four seats, and they're. They're going to have to bring the rate up and do something inspirational to take this win. It looks like it looks like the victory over Navy is pretty safe, yep. um, but they're going to have to they're going to have to make it happen against BU here in this last 500. And that will get Harvard some points to the overall cup today. That'll be handed out to the team that finishes the best 5v through 1v. But still, want to win your head-to-head -head race, and the Terriers still have about a four to five seat lead. And I have Harvard still at 38. They've been stroking high. The entire race. A couple different Crimson taking looks over into that BU boat. Just saw a quick peek from Phil Bates in seat seven. Got to figure out what they need to do in these final couple hundred meters towards the flag. Terriers still lead. And I'd say that the Terriers I had about 36 couple strokes ago, so they probably have a little bit more room to go up if they need to. But it does look like Harvard's raised it. They're trying to make something happen here. BU trying to hold off a close finish coming. Boston University just in front. We're inside the final few strokes. BU 1, Hartford 2, Navy 3. Come to the finishing stretch. Looks like BU's pushed out a little bit on them. At the finishing line, BU just in front of Harvard. At the finish. Terriers take it. Harvard comes home just behind. About a second and a half or two between BU and Harvard. Fast times, too, both right around six minutes unofficially. A 6.03 unofficial time. It's a good time for the fourth varsity boats into a, a bit of a headwind. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. And the conditions were perfect. Um, good racing. I, when you have conditions like this, you, you're just fighting the other boat, which is not often the case in practice or in races. So a good test, good a good a good test and uh, Harvard guys have work to do before they get to sprints. Well, Terriers take the close finish in a preview of what they may see in sprints down the road. Harvard takes second, a big win over Navy, a good omen for the rest of the day as we'll see Penn, Harvard and Navy go head to head the rest of the way. Third varsity is coming up next on the Ivy League Digital Network.